Tom here from Lawrence Systems. It is September 27th of 2023, and there's been a lot of browser updates over the last few weeks. This is because we know there was a vulnerability, we just didn't have all the details in the WebP codec. Now the details have emerged, and I'm gonna be joined by Jason Slagle because we wanna talk about where this is besides the browser, and it turns out it's in a lot of places. So finding this is gonna be an ongoing investigation over the next few weeks to what software might have this embedded. Many companies, and this comes down to software bill of materials not being readily available with many of these companies, figuring out whether or not they have a dependency on it and whether or not they have it implemented in a way that can be exploited is something that's going to be coming out over time. So I'm going to have a forum post down below that I link to that I'll be dumping links in actively even after this video goes up uh, to try and keep people up to date with it. And of course, we're running around updating clients, but let's dive into the details and talk about just how bad this is. And yeah, it's bad. <laughs> All right, I am joined by Jason Slagle here. How you doing, Jason? Uh, got woken up with some fun stuff going on this morning, so I'm doing okay. I'm feeling better than yesterday and uh, ready to go. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad like the brain fog cleared just in time for a, <laughs> we'll just call it Log4j-ish event because Log4j is the first one, so we have to bring it up. This is just as critical. Uh, it's not necessarily a server vulnerability. It's a little worse than that. CVE 2023 Four eight six three. I mean, it can be a web server vulnerability. There's a lot of frameworks. You mentioned Flutter. You mentioned uh, a few others. Basically, anything that's using the WebP, this is CV. This is a ten out of ten. Like this is yeah. full code execution, and it starts with Apple. I, I think it was called was it Blast Pass? Yeah, Blast Pass. Which is yeah. A fun fun name <laughs> you're a really advanced threat actor this is the, the cool stuff and good news is it doesn't usually happen to our clients but it's really cool to read about someone found a really clever hack but as they unraveled it of how they were chaining all these attacks together it turned out to be a flaw the, the one that impacts the greater community is this flaw in webp that's been hanging out for a long time so who knows yeah. how long someone has known about this uh, but yeah. now the world knows about it because it's being patched and it's in more things than you realize. You might go, well, you know, cool. I, it's just my web browser and updated it, so I'm safe. But it's way more complicated than that. And that's what we're here to talk about. Yeah, I mean, so to give you an idea, this was originally released by Google. It came out two weeks ago, I believe. Two, uh, two -ish weeks no, ago. And it was the CVE. updates came out, but the details, we didn't, we didn't know what, yeah. we knew it was critical to update. So we always yeah. update. But the why, giving people yeah. two weeks to kind of catch up before the world gets to learn about just how bad this is. And that's that's what dropped on us. And that's what we're sharing with all of you. Yeah. And if you look at the original, the CVE 2023-4863, it does say it's WebP, right? But it says in Google Chrome. So, uh, you know, two weeks ago, most of the browsers updated, right? So most of the big, huge, huge things you would expect. Uh, <laughs> however, I mean, even Firefox, right, which does not use, they use their own rendering engine. They're not Chromium on the back end, but they still use live WebP, right? So they were vulnerable. And all of those browsers two weeks ago released updates, right? And, yeah. and so now today, fast forward to today, the CVE comes out on WebP itself. And now people are starting to go, oh, this is yeah, a lot more prevalent than you think it is. Pretty much all the communication apps we use, every single one of them is a Flutter or Electron app. Yeah, Flutter, Electron, and the if you're not familiar with Electron, you probably use it and didn't realize it. anything. This is a modern way they started programming things. So instead of actually taking and signals an example, and Signal was up to date on this, you signals just wrapping a browser in what looks like a application window. That way you can build a web browser based thing. So you can use yep. Slack in a browser, or you can use what looks like the Slack app, which is really just the browser. Yeah, wrapped into an application so it looks like a standalone app, but it's technically running Chromium on the back end and all the support libraries. And this is a real challenge because you don't necessarily know what version you're running of there. You have to take it apart. It doesn't easily tell you its secrets of which version of the WebP yeah. or more specifically, yeah. is it the VP8 codec that is in there? Uh, yeah, it's, it's VP81 or V81. Yeah, it's yeah. Yep. There's a real nuance to it, and Jason spent some time, that's why we're doing a video now, really taking it apart to make sure uh, we work with a lot of other people in the security community, and we're all trying to make sure we fully understand it, because we have to get this out to our clients to make sure, not, we browser updates, sure, that's easy, that's been taken care of two weeks yeah. ago. That That's not the nitty gritty, the nitty gritty is, what are those other applications that you might be running, that our clients might be running? For yep. example, Tom edits this video. This video is edited in a vulnerable version of DaVinci Resolved, or is it vulnerable? 
it yeah. definitely if they used WebP, unfortunately, I can't use WebP in the Linux version. So you couldn't send me a WebP file to execute on my DaVinci Resolve. So don't worry. I think I'm safe editing. <laughs> Yeah, it's but there's a lot of that, right? And that that begs one of the questions is that, you know, I went through uh, Qt is the underlying library that DaVinci uses and a bunch of other applications uh, of, of funny note, like the I play World of Warcraft occasionally. So I have the yep. Blizzard app on this PC I'm using at home and uh, it's uses a vulnerable version of WebP. I don't know if they actually use the assets on the back end, but there are a ton of things. Uh, the Corsair uh IQ thing that makes all the funny RGB go on my keyboard here. That's bundles of vulnerable version of it. Stream Deck uh, bundles yep. of vulnerable version of it. And it may not be the case where you have to uh, display an image. It could be the case of many of these things where you just open a directory with images in it and it will render a thumbnail right like right. And, I, and i don't know it's going to require a lot of testing from a lot of researchers to determine what is and is not vulnerable here i would assume at this point i would assume anything that bundles it is potentially vulnerable because there may be a non-obvious code path you can take to get things to execute things right so it may not be the case of it's vulnerable to the point of drive-by but it may be the case that a threat actor gets on your system and is able to somehow abuse one of these tools that's running as system right like the corsair yes. uh, library thing they may be able to abuse that to to do privilege privilege escalation so i think the first round of this will be a bunch of drive-by stuff you see and then you'll start seeing more clever uses of the vulnerability to start abusing things like uh services and stuff that bundle it to escalate where you're gonna where you're more likely to find this is going to be in your web applications companies that run web applications that let you upload video that is where the huge target is because if they let you upload any type of webp video and they have not updated whatever the underlying rendering is you can upload a modified version of this video file and then get execution privileges on there yeah i'm sure large scale companies i hope <laughs> like youtube and uh, linkedin anywhere you can upload different types of video probably have this patched right away but it's all it's going to be downhill quick from all the smaller mm -hmm. ones that may not do this uh, so it's not necessarily like a firewall problem you're not going to find this in your firewalls I, at least i hope you don't find it in firewall yeah. software unfortunately we have to break some bad news people windows 7 probably not getting a fix for this yeah, this is probably the nail in the Windows 7 coffin. Uh, from what I can tell, so so Edge is certainly vulnerable. Uh, and, you know, this goes all, all the way back to version 0 0.50 of Web um, or WebP, which is very old. Uh, and so the last version of Chrome or Edge shipped for Windows 7 based on quick research this morning. And maybe they, they do something they said they weren't going to do and release a new one. Uh, but the last version released was 109. And you got to get up to like 116, I, I believe, to, uh, to not be vulnerable to this. Yep. Uh, what I'm going to do with this video here, because there, we are still examining MSP tools, the tools we use to defend our clients and seeing what may or may not contain. This is going to be a forum post. You're going to find a forum post in the description down below. I will also link because we are pretty confident our friends at Huntress will also have their own rapid response. But then we can keep adding cumulatively all the links for this because I, I think mm -hmm. this is the story today. The story is going to keep expanding as we find things on there and I'll keep the links up to date so you can have a lot more knowledge on this as as you know we're compiling it internally I'm just going to dump it all externally as well for anyone who's interested in this and yeah. like and subscribe to uh stay up with that check out the forum link you don't have to sign up you can just view all the forums for free and so I'll try to do a big link dump in there including um that research previously on h264 fuzzing because I, I I feel like there's some relationship here. I'm just speculating. <laughs> uh, that's probably well, a pretty good fire, guess. right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. Thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, we're yeah. gonna get back to patching systems. Yep. See ya. Cool.